Hey folks, welcome back to the channel, or welcome if you haven't been before. I'm Watto. And I'm Kim. And we wander about. Today we're taking a look at Pont Casilta, if I've said that right, Aqueduct, Thomas Telford's Stream in the Sky. get a boat trip to go across here it's 10 pound per adult which i think is a little bit expensive we're just going to walk it designed by thomas telford and william jessup the aqueduct carries the langothlan canal high above the river d on 18 pillars to achieve its great height the upper part of the aqueduct had to be as light as possible the solid masonry piers become hollow as they rise near the top topped with slender ribs of cast iron these support a trough of thin iron plates bolted together holding 1.5 million liters of water it's a long way down for sure the total weight of water in this aqueduct is about 1500 tons so it should hold me the aqueduct also inspired artists by the way that it worked nicely with the landscape the novelist sir walter scott said it was the most impressive work of art he had ever seen well don't walter not a bad office for you it's all right it's all right isn't it <laughs> Uh, that's not a bad job. I reckon I could get involved with that. Trundling across here a few times a day. For sure. Well, I've just had to tighten up my hat because it's nearly blowing off. We are 126 feet up. A viaduct in the distance there. With the railway going across. Both examples of fantastic engineering and has been declared a World Heritage Site, and so it should be. As a masterpiece of creative genius, it carries the Clangothlan Canal across the River Dee on its 11 mile journey. You go off the aqueduct and you can walk as far as you fancy down the canal towards Langothlin. <laughs> this was a great little walk even if it was a bit weird to walk next to a boat 126 feet up in the air And who doesn't enjoy looking at tools?
just had a lovely little chat with a, a local guy and then we're looking at this bit of the basin and uh, apparently just through this tunnel here the boats used to go through there and service the works that was in there obviously taking the goods in and out and that's why there's this fork in the in the canal here where this lot branched off went up that tunnel and up there you'd have a job getting up there now This is the sort of the end of the basin bit itself. So, why build an aqueduct across the River Dee? Well, the reason being is this area had all the ingredients it needed to be a rich industrial area. Coal seams, limestone quarries, and clay pits. All that was missing was a link, a trade link up to the industrial towns in the Midlands and what have you. Solving transport issues 200 years ago meant building a canal. So that's what they did. Canals were fast, efficient and cost effective compared to the road network of the time. But there was a challenge. How do you get working boats across a deep valley? And solving the issue of getting across that gorge was what gave birth to the aqueduct itself. Right, well I hope you've enjoyed that little uh, wander around the aqueduct and this tree ball basin bit. We think it's been really good, yeah. enjoyed it. Chaos with some boats in that little turning circle. <laughs> Certainly was. Um, but made for a good little time lapse which was good. If you have liked it, you know what to do. Give us a big thumbs up, click that subscribe button if you can, and we'll see you on the next one. Say goodbye Kim. Goodbye Kim. Bye Kim. <laughs>